Well, Adesa Ben Adenoy is the International Federation of the Red Cross and Red Crescent Society's representative. He is the head of the Health and Care Unit for its Africa region. He joins us now from Nairobi. Thanks so much for speaking to us. Uh, first, I'd like to ask what you actually make of this study. I mean, should African governments really be jumping further into action now based on these predictions? Um, thank you very much. Um, it's a pleasure to be on this show. And um, um, actually, I think um, the predictions are quite uh, timely um, uh, with respect to the fact that um, we are beginning to see um, uh, an upward evolution of uh, the COVID uh, pandemic in the region. So, and um, I think it's something that every government and Ministry of Health um, should take seriously. And um, if you look at the report clearly, it states that um, WHO country office and the ministries of health will be using um, results of the study uh, to inform their uh, response strategies, which I think is very timely and welcome. Okay, I mean, from what you've seen across the continent so far, uh, whom would you maybe congratulate uh, for taking the most effective steps against the virus? And whom are, who are you most worried about? Um, so far, I think um, right from the beginning, um, as we have followed up closely, um, we've seen that um, uh, African member states have taken proactive measures right from the beginning, before the first case arrived on the continent, to ensure that measures are, uh, uh, measures are put in place, to ensure that points of entry screening at every airport is done. And that is why most of the cases you would see um, at the beginning in, in, on the continent were actually imported cases. That means the surveillance um, at the points of entry were really, really effective in detecting the cases. And the result is what we see so far in terms of uh, um, the gradual evolution that has not been as rapid as we have seen elsewhere. So we give credit to every member state for that proactiveness in ensuring that imported cases were detected at the point of entry. Okay. You know, though, a number of particularly Southern African countries um, are still struggling with uh, HIV as a pandemic there. And even though there's treatment, their immune systems are compromised. Are you concerned with how much more that phenomenon alone, not, not as, as well tuberculosis we mentioned, uh, how much more it puts Africans at risk? Um, absolutely. Um, the existence of um, HIV, and just like any other disease, is a source of concern and worry for all of us. Uh, first and foremost, um, just to be clear that um, there is no clear evidence of um, HIV status uh, being a factor of severity for COVID-19. But however, something that we need to keep at the back of our minds is that um, as we are currently seeing um, in other places, the potential of COVID-19 cases overwhelming health systems um, could cause disruption of services. Um, and of course, as you know, the HIV, tuberculosis and malaria, um, which you have mentioned, are high burden on the continent. And disruption of services of any kind would actually lead to increase in the number of cases or severity of these other diseases. So it's a major concern for all of us. Uh, at the moment, and which, of course, I think um, we are all working uh, head on to battle this uh, potential threat and challenge to the health system. Right. Do you think uh, on the flip side of that, is there any benefit to having a relatively young population in Africa, as some studies have shown that younger people uh, tend to be less affected by it and have stronger enough systems to, to really fend it off if they do get infected? Yes, thank you. To put that in perspective, um, young people can get infected. They can be potential transmitters. So we should have a word of caution there that um, young people are only protected with respect to the severity in the manifestation of the disease. So we need to be careful that young people could actually equally transmit this to those who might be more vulnerable. While it might be protective with respect to the severity and the overall outcome, which is that, but caution uh, on the side of the fact that they could also transmit uh, the COVID-19. Okay. Adesa Ben Adinoy, thank you so much for joining us there. We greatly appreciate it.